from Silicon Valley, California. This is Fresh Dialogues. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dialogues. Today I'm going to interview K.R. Sridhar from Bloom Energy. So is Bloom Energy's solution, is it non-polluting, zero uh, pollution? Yes and no, and I'll explain what I mean by that. We have charted a roadmap. The roadmap simply says, today you have abundance of fossil energy, which no matter how you use it, will create some greenhouse gases. But then you ask the question, for the same amount of energy that I need to produce, useful energy, you know, electricity, for example, that I need to produce, how do I cause the least amount of pollution? So how can I take that fossil fuel and produce, squeeze the maximum number of electrons out of it until the renewable fuels in a sustainable way become prevalent and, you, and the same technology that you used as a bridge to the future is also the future because it can use the renewable, uh, renewable fuels and give you zero net carbon. Right. So it, it can do both. So that's the practical way to get into something is as a baby, you first learn to crawl, then to walk, and then run. Uh, we want to just go from sitting down to running. And I, I don't think there is that magic portion. So we're building both the bridge as well as the future destination. Tell me in simple terms for a layperson, what the bloom box does. You know, I've, I've read that it's a chemical reaction in a box. Can you explain a little more than that? It's a, it's a, the easier way to describe that without getting into the details again is very simply, when you take a fuel, doesn't matter whether it's a renewable fuel like a biofuel or a biomass generated fuel, or it is a fossil fuel. Uh, coal, oil, natural gas, whatever it is. A fuel is simply a substance that has in it chemical energy. You burn that in air, that's combustion. And when you burn that, you see the flame, and that creates heat. So you've converted chemical energy to heat energy. That raises steam. The steam then goes into a big turbine that spins, so you've converted the heat energy to mechanical energy. Now, around that is a copper coil, and that copper coil called an alternator converts the mechanical energy to electrical energy. So the way you convert this fuel to electrons on the other end, which is what you need, is going from chemical energy to thermal energy to mechanical energy to electrical energy. When you do multiple forms of energy conversion, it's like starting with your dollar and going from airport to airport and changing your currency everywhere mm. and paying the commissions. You're losing out. Yes. And at the end, you end up with a lot, more, a lot less than a dollar if you started with a dollar. Right. And uh, in, in science terms, uh, if you start with a dollar in this chemical, you end up f with 30 to 40 cents by the time you get to electrons in the conventional way of converting the fuel. And a to, lot of CO2. Yeah, yeah, to the electricity. So if you need 40 cents worth of electricity, you need to burn 100 cents worth of fuel and create 100 cents equivalent of CO2, wherever that is. And after that, because this kind of conversion only works very well in large scale, we are talking, you know, 500 megawatts to a gigawatt size plant. Uh, which can do somewhere from half a million to a million homes, if you want to think about it, that size, big power plants, you put them very far away from where you live, and you have transmission distribution lines that bring right. it hundreds of miles. So you lose another 8 to 10%. So you've done one more conversion of your currency, if you want to think about yes. it, lose another 8 to 10% in con you know, conversion. So what the bloom box does is it takes the chemical energy from the fuel and converts that to electrons with no in-between conversion. So you're changing your currency only once. And how does it do that? Uh, it is an electrochemical reaction. The simplest way for you to conceive of that is similar to your battery. You right. know, in your car you have a lead-acid battery and a chemical reaction goes on and electricity comes on the other side. So you're all familiar, everybody's familiar with that. 
the big difference between our box, which is a fuel cell, and that box, which is a battery, is a battery is only a storage device, energy storage device. You put the energy in, it keeps it there. When you need it, you suck it out. And if it's a primary battery, you can use it once and throw it away. If it's a rechargeable battery, you keep doing that cycle, charge, recharge cycle again and again. Whereas in a fuel cell, it's not a storage device. It is a power generator. So you keep supplying the fuel in. As long as you're supplying the fuel, you'll keep getting your electrons out without having to go through the charge-recharge cycle, but a similar electrochemical reaction, which is simply to say you take a chemical and convert that to electricity with no in-between steps, and most importantly, without combustion, without fire. And so not only do you because of the high efficiency you get from that one-step conversion, do you have to burn less fuel and therefore less greenhouse-emitting gases? But because there is no combustion, you eliminate all the combustion-related polluting gases like NOx and SOx from getting into the atmosphere. Right. And I also understand part of um, the bloom box is splitting out the hydrogen, Uh, That's an option. So uh, people always ask, it's electricity, is it a fuel cell for the car? The answer is no. This is a stationary uh, for stationary uses, like buildings and houses and stuff like that. So then the question is, we got the big transportation infrastructure that requires fuel, and how are you going to deal with that? Well, the answer is transportation can potentially go in two directions in the future. One is a hydrogen infrastructure for the car. The other one is an electrical infrastructure for the car. We are already getting a lot more comfortable with plug-in hybrids, right? Which is which is right around the horizon. Do you, which do you is, drive which, one? You know, which is an you know which is an electrical. Mm-hmm. Well, when the when the when the plug-in hybrids are there, I would drive one. I don't like. You don't the, drive a Tesla. I don't. I don't like the hybrid as it is. Well, Tesla. Unfortunately, I have children and I need a four-seater. <laughs> So, uh, so, so I'm waiting for the Fisker, right. <laughs> which right. is a four seater. Yes, it's imminent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how- so there, so you got either hydrogen or electricity. So our device can either pr- produce the electricity that will charge the car, or provide you hydrogen if the transportation becomes a hydrogen based. So we have sort of become the gas station. Right for the transportation you, industry. I mean, your vision of the future with this KR, do you see it? I mean, I've been, I've been told or I've read that it's been described as a refrigerator-sized device. That's is, the ultimate vision. The that's ultimate the vision ultimate. Is, the ultimate vision is how we get there, I can't describe right I now. I see. So okay. that's maybe, what, 20 years off or something? Uh, no, or who knows? I, mean, I mean, for us, again, Silicon Valley time, ultimate is within a decade. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay, so it's right. all within a right. decade. Right. Thank you for listening to Fresh Dialogues. This is Alison Van Diggelen. For more lively interviews with many more leaders, go to freshdialogues.com. With special thanks to Carol Pecora for technical support and Kevin McLeod, who wrote and produced our music. 